Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back. So I thought I'd uh, show you a couple different chargers that I have. Um, the IMAX B6 AC is actually my newest one. Um, the Team Grade Hobbies V6 AC DC is basically the same charger. Um, they both operate very much the same, uh, so there's nothing majorly confusing about them. Um, reading through the manuals can probably throw you for a little bit of a mind twist. Um, I know I, I read the manual for the IMAX and I was like, <laughs> um, yeah, all right. So I just played with the menus and they're set the same pretty much as my team grade hobbies. And the high tech is also going to be the same as your team grade hobbies and the uh, IMAX B6AC. So um, I thought I'd give you a little bit of a tour here and uh, my hand's going to get in the way the odd time here. but. Um, Right now, we're on program select on both of them, and I've got a LiPo battery on this one and a lithium ion on the other, which lithium ion and LiPo, they're basically the same battery, and they both use the LiPo feed, um, so, because they don't have lithium ion specific, so LiPo and lithium ion, same stuff. So anyways, so what we want to do here is um, we want to press on the enter button. Now, this one here is set to charge at four and a half amps on a 6S battery. So we need to change that. So this battery is a 1500 milliamp, so we're gonna take that down to 1.5. And of course, we're gonna take this down to a 2S. And this one here is already set at two amps, and this is a 1500 milliamp lithium ion. So we're gonna press the button once, and put it at 1.5 amps, 2S. Now, that's giving it a straight charge. That's no balancing involved, but I know for sure that my team grade hobbies, I have to have both plugins plugged in. My JST connector to my power lines here, and my balance lead has to be plugged in or this won't charge anything. This one, let's find out. So let's say we're going to start the charge, push and hold, and then let go, connection break. So, what that's telling me is it needs to have it connected. So, push and hold again. It's going to ask me to confirm, so press the start or enter button. And we're just going to top this battery up. Lipo charge. Press and hold. Battery check. Confirm. Enter. So exactly the same programming on both for that. So let's stop these. Now we're still in the Lipo charge mode. So let's go back here to Lipo battery. And we're going to press the uh, INC button. Okay, or forward button. Lipo balance, 2 amps, 3S. So, in this case, 1.5 amps. And back button or descend button, 2 cell. Press and hold. Wait. Confirm, enter. Now it's going to balance. Now if you push either one of these, what happens is this is going to give you your cell counts here. It's got two cells on the list. Capacity cutoff is set for 5,000 milliamps. So, but it's going to cut off way before that. It's not going to try and overcharge the battery. There's fail safes in these things. They know where the battery, when it senses it, what it needs, so it'll automatically top the battery to where it needs to be. So we'll go to this one here. Forward button, balance. 1.5 amps. Two cell. Confirm, enter. Same thing. It's going to show up the same way. End voltage is at 8.4 volts. 
a little bit different on that one. So this one's going to give us an end voltage right away on there. But we can also click it again. Capacity cutoff is 7600 milliamps. So which is where I have it preset because my biggest battery that I charge is actually 7600 milliamps right now. But again, it's going to cut off for the battery. It's just that with a larger capacity battery, you set it for a higher cutoff rate. So, but otherwise it's just going to cut off when it needs to. And here, safety timer is at 130 minutes. Default is 120. Temperatures. This has thermal um, temperature uh, sensors and all that sort of jazz, although they didn't give me the cables for it. The connectors are there. So this will have a few features that this one doesn't have. End voltage, 8.4 volts on 2S. Capacity cutoff etc. Press the start button, it goes right back to where it's balancing. Okay. Now if you want to uh, drain a battery, lipo charge, lipo discharge. Now the highest rate of discharge that the Great Hobbies charger can discharge a battery at is at one full amp. And it doesn't matter if you're on 2S, 3S, whatever. But it only drops it down to 6.0 volts on 2S, so 3 volts per cell. So even if you go back here, hit forward all you want, no. If you want to drain it at a slower rate, you can, but it takes forever. Even at 1 amp, it takes a long time. But you can start uh, discharging, and then you don't have to hit the button to confirm. It will automatically start discharging. Whenever I use up a battery, if I haven't used it all, but even if I have, once my batteries have cooled down, I always run them through a, just a dra straight drain cycle, drain them right down to the end, and then I'll balance charge them every single time. This way it keeps the cells healthy, they get properly drained, because a lot of ESCs will cut off at 3.3, 3.8, 3.6, it just depends, right? So there's always milliamps left over. So if you want to avoid a memory issue, which can actually happen, believe it or not, yes it does on lipos, then what you'd want to do is make sure you do a full discharge of the battery, take it right down to three volts per cell, and then recharge. And this will give your battery a lot longer uh, charge cycle life, better performance, etc. Okay? So this one here is already at 8.4 volts, but it's still jamming some milliamps in because it needs to. When lipo batteries sit on the shelf, even charged, um, over time they lose um, a tiny little bit of voltage, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 volts. You know, it really doesn't sound like a much because it isn't, but they do tend to lose some milliamps along with that. So, you know, to just peek it out before you go out and play, you can do that. Not a big deal because that's basically what's going on on this one right now. Well, this one's just charging. So now I started the discharge cycle, I'm not going to stop it and then just re-top it off. I'm going to completely drain it down and recharge it. Because these batteries have been sitting on the shelf for a while now, um, they could actually use a cycle. Yeah, I could put them in storage mode, there is storage mode features here. Okay, no problem. Um, fast charge, you can uh, fast charge these things. And this charger will go up quite high, which is nice. It'll actually uh, charge up to uh, 6 amps. Okay, which you don't want to jam 6 amps into a little tiny battery like this. You'll probably explode it. So the idea with LiPo batteries is to always charge them based on their own milliamps. So 1500 milliamp battery, you charge at 1.5 amps. 2000 at 2 amps. And so on. Now... What happens if you have a 7600 milliamp? Well, you charge it at 5 amps because, you know, you don't have 7600 milliamps, okay? This, these things are not unlimited, right? But this charger, I can charge my 7600 at a full 6 amp, okay? Providing my battery is designed to handle full 6 amp input, okay? This charger will only go as high as 5 amp input max. So, and of course, 3.7 volt. We want two cell, because this charger will charge a single cell. Now, it knows that a single cell battery 
is attached when there's nothing plugged into here and it will charge only as a single cell so you can't because you can't balance a single cell it just basically itself balances as it charges right it's one cell um, so you can hook just the one cell on and um, either charger does that so uh, what I'll do is I'll grab a single cell battery here and we'll just disconnect this now here's a single cell battery plug that right in there here we'll just paste it on this one for a minute so lipo select um, this is like a 500 milliamp battery so we're just going to go um, 0.5 so 0 0.5 amps is 500 milliamps and we want single cell and push and hold and this time we have to confirm yes and it's going to charge just as a single cell because it knows it's not a two cell so it doesn't require the port being ac um, accessed on the side because the port on the side is only for two to six there's two to six cells so the chargers are very 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 simple uh, to use it's just amazing how simple these things really actually are um, you know so it doesn't take a lot to get into figuring them out so let's stop this one and we'll uh, show you how it works with a NIM now I'm going to switch to a different kind of a connector make sure you go positive to positive negative to negative the way it should be I'm going to grab one of these tracks of the batteries Now this is a 4200 milliamp battery and I can actually charge this at a full 4 amps without hurting anything. So we're just going to go back here. NIM battery is what we want now. NIM charge. We want a current rating. And we're going to put it at 4.2 amps. Okay. Press and hold. Let go. And it'll start charging this thing now at 4.2 amps. So it can charge it within an hour. Okay. Now, while we're still on here, NIM discharge. Maximum is a 2 amp discharge rate. Okay. Charge to one, discharge it to 1 volt per cell. Each cell is actually 1.2 volts, okay? So you can go 1.2 volts, this way it doesn't completely flatline it, or you can leave it at 1 volt. I always take mine down to 1 volt, but that's just me. And then you can start the discharge cycle. Push and hold, and it'll start discharging that battery. So in a 2 amps, it's going to still take a few hours because this battery is already mostly charged anyways and it keeps an eye on how many milliamps are coming out when you're discharged and this will also keep an eye on how many milliamps go into the battery as it's being charged which will also give you a good idea on the condition of your batteries when they're being charged um, but it's kind of a um, it's not a hundred percent science some batteries claim to be 5,000 really they're like a 5,500 um, you know, some of them say they're 1,200, really they're a 14 or a 1,500. Um, you know, it just varies on the battery, but you, it shouldn't be below the rated. If it's below the rated amount of what that battery should be, there's probably a chance that you may have a bad battery or your battery is getting weak, you know, and that's what you'll find out certainly uh, as time progresses. So even with your NIM packs, um, when you're going to recharge them, always discharge them first, flatten them out, and then recharge them again, and voila. And you'll notice, of course, there's no balance connectors in use here because it is an impact. They do not use or require balance connector, and the charger knows this. So it knows what it's charging. And you'll have the other modes, too, for your Lifey batteries, your PVs, etc. There's all kinds of programming in here. 
um, you know, but I only have lithium ion, lipo, and NIMPAX to, to show you. So you get the basic idea of how to go through the menus, how to work this thing. It's not something you should be intimidated about. When I first got a charger um, that was high end, it was actually, this was my highest end one. My other one was actually, um, it was called a Passport and I loved it. It was like push a button, walk away. That was it, you know? Well, not really walk away, but you know, I sat in the living room and it was behind me on the counter charging, so I was able to keep an eye on it. But it was just a one button thing. You just set up your amperage and your cell rate and you push the button, that's it. No digital display, none of that stuff, no drain cycles. But then I got the team grade hobbies charger and I was like, oh my God, digital stuff. I gotta learn something new. Can I figure this out, you know? And it's like, yeah, of course I can. It's just, how hard is it gonna be? And it turned out it was not very hard at all. Not very hard at all. So the first time I saw an IMAX B6, you know, it looked a little complicated. My buddy has one and it looked a little complicated. This was before the team grade hobbies came into my life. And uh, I was like, wow, man, that kind of sucked, you know? But then by learning this one, and then finding out that these are actually basically the same charger, you know, plus or minus a few features between them. They both operate virtually identical. So there's really not a steep learning curve going to a little bit higher end machine, right? So, and I am going to buy a few more of these IMAX B6s because I do have, I do want to charge several batteries at once. And I can't um, afford like a four-in-one charger type of thing. You know, and I'm not into doing all that modding stuff and whatnot. So, you know, I'm going to just buy a couple of these. At 36 bucks a pop, you know, hey, you can't go wrong. And IMAX B6s are a really good popular charger. You know, a lot of people have them. A lot of people love them. So, hey, you know, and so far I'm liking this thing. Um, the one thing you will notice, though, is the first time you run this thing, um, it's going to get hot if you're discharging or charging. Uh, but then after that... Um, I guess it has to break in somehow, but um, now it's running, you know, just warm to the touch. So that's cool, you know, so, and I had the same thing actually happen on a couple other chargers, um, you know, where they would run hot initially, brand new out of the box for the first charge or two. Um, my Hobby King DS, uh, or D, D, DS-4, I think it was. Um, anyways, it was the same way. It ran hot for the first couple of batteries. After that, it ran virtually cool all the time, you know, and uh, so don't worry about, you know, oh, it's running hot, there's something wrong with it. More than likely, no, there's nothing wrong with it, it just needs to break in. And uh, this one's already been broken in today, so it's all good to rock and roll. And uh, so anyhow, that's uh, the bit of a tour. Um, if you have any other questions, you know, feel free to ask. I'll do the best I can to answer them. Um, you know, feel free to leave your comments too, and uh, we'll ch check you guys out in the next video. Thanks for watching.